Longer B1 laser, great machine. Got a couple of little tips and tweaks to uh, go over with it today. If you have one of these, you're probably going to want to pay attention to this. Uh, first one is to make sure that you have the right Gerbil version on your setup and light burn. That's very, very important. Uh, if you have not done, made that change to, from Gerbil M3 to Gerbil, is when it does its auto setup, it puts it in the wrong place for some unknown reason. When you stop your laser, the beam will stay on. Not at full power, but it'll stay on enough that you could potentially start a fire. So it's important that you make that little tweak if it uh, hasn't been done already. Perhaps some of the l later ones that's already been done. I did this quite a while back. I had just failed to ever mention it in a video. Okay, the next little tip tweak thing I want to show here is uh, depending on how old your laser is and how far back you got it, you could have a nozzle here for the air assist that is just way too big in diameter uh, for the, where the air comes out. Uh, the one I have on here right now has a proper one. This head has one that's too big, and I'll show you what I mean. Try to get up here close and try to show this. It's going to be hard to show on it. This hole right here is like three times bigger than it needs to be. So you either need to uh, obtain the smaller air assist nozzle from longer. Uh, as a temporary thing, you can take a piece of blue painter's tape and just put over that and then let the laser burn a hole through it. And that's a fix for now, but that's not a permanent fix. I saw where someone else had 3D printed a little insert to put in there to narrow it down. And if you have a 3D printer, you could do that too. but. Uh, it's better to just get the right one. Uh, in fact, I'll show you what it should look like. I'll just take the head off of here. So hopefully you can see here, it needs to be about an eighth inch of diameter. It needs to be small, like that. Not uh, that great big thing. So, big difference there, makes a big difference in how well your air assist performs. This one's missing the arm off of it because I broke it. So I gotta get another one. Another question I get on these uh, from time to time, on this particular laser, actually on a few of them, uh, there's three different things you can do in light burn for positioning your work. Absolute coordinates is what I work from 99% of the time. And I work from, I set my project up on the center of the layout grid and go from there. Everything's done from center. Absolute coordinates, works perfect. There are situations though where that doesn't work. And I'm going to use this here for an example. This dish, to laser engrave this tree in this dish, so this dish has a raised edge. I need to engrave down in here. I can't do that with absolute coordinates because as the laser moves, after it's focused down here on this surface, the uh, shield of the laser hits this dish, pushes it out of the way. So that doesn't work. So what, what's next? Current position? Not on this laser. Some lasers you can do it with, some you can't. I think it has something to do with the firmware. So what you're going to have to use is what they call user origin. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I know a lot of people get confused with it. And it's important that you set your finish position as well because if the laser tries to home after it has done its engraving, it'll drag the dish with it. I'll show you what I mean here. So as you can see, I've got my dish sit in here. I'm, this one's already engraved. I'm not going to engrave another one today. I'm just giving this as an example. I have set my focus here. The thing down, meet the dish. Because I'm going to be engraving here. But when this moves, it's going to take the dish with it. So because of that, we need to work on this from what they call user origin. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. So I'm going to take my dish out of here first. So I don't want to go running into that when I turn the laser on. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, sugar skull here as a kind of an example. I'm not actually going to engrave it. I just want to, I have to have a graphic in here to be able to show how to do this. So my laser is currently in the home position. So I want to go up here to move tab. Now I need to move this to where I am going to be working from on the laser bed by using these arrows. So I've got to set to move an inch at a time at 1500 millimeters per minute. Kind of, 
So I'll hit this a few times, kind of get it out there in the center of my work area. Okay, I've got it pretty much over there in the center. That's pretty close. Now what I want to do is set my origin. So we have now set the origin. Now I need to put my dish under there. So now I also want to click on set finish position. I want it to stop there. I don't want it to try to come back home. It'll drag that dish all the way across the board. So now I can frame that. As you see there, and it does not hit the dish. And I can go ahead and actually do my engrave. And what I think I'm going to do here is uh, I'll speed this way up, turn the power way down. I'll just actually run it on here. So we'll run that at 10,000 millimeters per minute, 1% power. That way it won't mess up my graphic there. Now I can hit start. And it'll do its thing there. How long this is going to take? Three minutes, three to almost four minutes. So you see that when it gets done and it stops, it goes right back to where it started there. It doesn't try to go home. As I said, if it did try to go home, it would drag that dish with it. So that's how you use user origin. Uh, on, now on some lasers, it, like I say, it depends on the firmware, you can use current position. Uh, to where you just move the laser to where you want, set the current position, it'll do its thing, and it'll stop right there again. It, it, I think it depends on the firmware. If you have a laser that does not have limit switches, you can definitely use current position. That's pretty much the best way to work with those types of lasers. Those with limit switches, some you can and some you can't. Uh, for example, I've got a, a Kentuck tool over there that has limits and everything, but you can use current position. Uh, this one and my Atom stack, you can't. You have to use user origin or, for me, absolute coordinates. That's where I work from 99% of the time. If I'm doing flat work, for example, like this here, or I'm doing cutting or something, and I don't need to get deal with curved areas, uh, absolute coordinates is the way to go. It's the easiest, quickest. And if you have a layout grid like this, you can set this down in your square and go. And every time it's in the same place. Uh, there were, again, if you have something that's dished like this, you need to use uh, user origin and you need to set it up that way. And make sure you set your finish position so that it doesn't try to go home and drag the whole project with it. Because I've made that mistake before. Don't forget to do that. So there's a few little quick tips of the longer B1. You got anything out of this? Appreciate sure getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'll put a link in the description on uh, where to get one of these from longer if you'd like to get one. It's a good laser. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.